The House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunez, he dropped the bombshell and all the news that following the November election that the Trump transition team and their communications were captured by intelligence community surveillance. After being briefed by Chairman Nunez, President Trump, well, he said he felt somewhat vindicated by this revelation. Check this out. Did you feel vindicated by Chairman Nunez coming over here? I, I somewhat do. I must tell you, I somewhat do. I very much appreciated the fact that uh, uh, they found what they found. But I somewhat do. And joining us now, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Devin Nunez, a congressman from California. Congressman, thank you for being with us. Let, let's go over what it is that you said the other day, which has now gotten a lot of play, and that is, in fact, surveillance took place in November, December, and January of the president-elect, his trans transition team. What else do you know? Well, what bothers me is what uh, what I was able to review. Uh, in uh, looks like it was in November, December, and January. Uh, those reports are concerning to me, and uh, I briefed the speaker, and then uh, went to I spoke to the news media publicly, uh, and then went to brief the president on what I saw because I think it's important that he sees it. The president then said that he felt vindicated over his claims that he felt he was well. He said wiretapping, but surveillance wiretapping, in my view, were just really parsing words. Um, but he was picked up, at least in an incidental way. Um, can you give us more detail about it? Well, it's tough for me to get into it, right, because I've only read the report, so I don't know all the intelligence that went into it. Uh, but to me, I'm, it's clear that uh, I would be concerned if I was the president. Uh, and that's why I wanted him to know. And I felt like I had a duty and obligation to tell him because, as you know, he's been taking a lot of heat in the news media. Uh, and I think to some degree, uh, there are some things that he should look at to see whether, in fact, uh, he thinks the collection was proper or not. All right. What about this process? Because we got to go back. I think you would agree with me that the unmasking, if we have our intelligence community doing their job, and I, I, I want to emphasize that I have great faith in our intelligence community, and they, they provide this country with safety and security. It is a necessary evil in an evil world, right? Um, but in the process of surveilling anybody from any foreign country, which they have a right to do and an obligation to do, if an American is picked up on that call, isn't it standard operating procedure, sir, that they don't unmask the identity of the American, doesn't matter who it is, and that when they write up the report, they usually would not include the name of that person or details, they would minimize what they, they actually say the American is saying? Isn't that standard operating procedure? Right, I think there's a couple different issues at play here. So, so names for sure, if they're picked up in any incidental collection of any kind, they should be minimized. Uh, however, the other issue you're bringing up is, is unmasking. So if there was an unmasking of a name, additional names, uh, we need to know who, who requested that unmasking, uh, why, what was the purpose for unmasking, because it should be pretty rare that American names are unmasked. Uh, and, and that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of, and we're hopeful that we get some of the information tomorrow uh, so that the rest of our committee can uh, review it. And then that would also mean that in the case of General Flynn, not only did an unmasking take place, but also an intelligence leak, which, as I am understand it, never happens in a case where signal intelligence such as this is, in fact, obtained. Is that correct? Yeah, I've never heard of the, I've never heard of that happening before. And as I've said many times, the only crime that we know has been committed here is that one. And it's quite clear. That it was a crime. Uh, and, you know, look, I think you said it right, Sean. These programs are vitally important to the security of our country. Uh, and that's why uh, we take this seriously uh, here in Congress but to do our, conduct our oversight. Uh, and clearly, when I see a problem, I'm going to point it out. When, and in the case of, of any type of leak, that would be a violation of the Espionage Act. That would be a felony. That would be five years potentially in prison. That's that's correct. It's, yeah. and, and, and that it appears like that that happened. Right. I mean, we won't know until we got all the details. But uh, from my perspective, it, it appears like that was a crime. And that raises another question, because you talked about it being widely dispensed within the intelligence community, meaning many people saw the surveillance of the president elect and his transition team. And they were identified. 
Then it goes to the issue of how many people had access to it. Two weeks before President Obama left office, he modified Executive Order 12333, which allowed the sharing of this type of intelligence, which had never happened before with 16 other agencies. Is there a possibility that was done so that leaks could be covered up, sir? Well, in the reports that I read, they were clearly uh, disseminated far and wide, and I don't think it actually has anything to do with the change uh, in that procedure. Uh, but, but what I saw was disseminated pretty far, uh, and in many cases you have to wonder, wonder why, which is why I raised the question. But prior to that modification of, of Executive Order 12333, it was not usual practice to widely disseminate. So certainly, they had to look, if this happened in November and December, that didn't happen until January, the, the alteration of 12333. Is there anybody that you saw that had dissemination of, of these documents? Well, that, I just want to be, I, I don't want to get in the, in the weeds uh, here, Sean. I don't believe that change impacted what I saw. Okay. okay? But, but with that said, I will say that the dissemination was pretty far and wide. Uh, and like I've, I've said before, I think it appears to me that it was all legal. Uh, the question is, is, should it have been done in the first place? Did it meet foreign intelligence value? Uh, and then secondly, uh, was any, were any other American names uh, unmasked? And uh, I have information that says that there were. Do you question whether or not it was necessary for surveillance? In other words, when you read, okay, they, so-and-so was talking to so-and-so. Did you get the impression, uh, I, why would this be surveilled in the first place? Look, I think there is, in a lot of what I saw, there is a lot of a lot of foreign intelligence value. I mean, look, our analysts do a really good job. Our intelligence agents do a great job. And so, you know, what it was, it was on the margins. There were things that I'm just not sure it should have been included uh, into an intelligence report. And then surely uh, there shouldn't have been an unmasking of additional Americans' names. Congressman, did you see any legal issues that would worry the president in any way, shape, manner, or form? No, and I've said that too. Uh, the, what I saw had nothing to do with Russia. This has nothing to do with the Russia investigation. Uh, but it was important enough that I thought the President of the United States should know uh, what is being said about him and his transition team. The FBI director did confirm, now it is usual practice, and I've heard James Comey say it itself, that they don't comment on potential or ongoing investigations. He did confirm an investigation into Russian influencing of the election, but he wouldn't That's confirm. Right. He wouldn't confirm whether or not there will be an investigation and you pressed him hard on the issue of whether or not those people leaking intelligence whether that's being investigated it seems to me that the fbi director shouldn't be able to have it both ways yeah i mean look the leak the the leak investigation or lack of a leak investigation is quite concerning uh we we need to make sure that these leaks are being tracked down and it's part of the part of our investigation is to make sure that we do try to find who was at least knowledgeable of the information that eventually got leaked. One last question. In terms of the ability, if you look at the leak of General Flynn, we know that's a felony. You agree that's a felony. Mm -hmm. Is this something that would have to come, could this happen at a low level? Or is this something that would have to happen at a very high level, meaning a director or just below a director? In other words, who would actually have access to that type of intelligence? Well, as we, if, if, if we do expect that his name was unmasked, I think the key would be able to figure out who actually unmasked the name and who requested that unmasking. There has to be a record of that. Once we can get a hold of that, uh, we'll know a lot more from there. Yeah, and so do you suspect then that people will go to jail over this? <laughs> well, once you understand who did the unmasking, then you have to know who it was uh, pushed down to, what, what's the, the, the complete audience of people that would have had the name, and then you kind of know at least your initial folks that would know about it. Now, I think that also goes back to 12333 because it could have been now 16 other agencies involved that maybe something hand-delivered and not sent over electronic device. Sir, I appreciate your time. Thank you for being with us. Thanks, Sean.